PSX textures are basically the hallmark of indie games. It's a relatively easy texturing style to produce and it looks good as hell. If you've ever browsed the popular games page on itch.io, then it can feel like you've just stepped into a time machine straight into the 2000s. I mean, it makes sense though. If you're a solo developer or a small indie team, then you probably don't have the time, money or resources to make the next cyberpunk. If you'd like to learn how to make some PSX textures for your video game, then stick around because I'm going to be showing you how you can make something like this. Yes, this scene is quite heavily inspired by the game Hollow Body, a game that's been created by one single dev over at Headwear Games, so go check him out. But if you're here to learn, then you only need one thing, a copy of Photoshop or an alternative image editing software. I'm going to be going a little bit against the grain here. Typically, PSX textures sit around 256 to 512. I'm going to be working on 1K images. So let's create a 1024 by 1024 canvas. Create a new folder, name it bottom and add a mask to that folder. Add in a solid color, change it to brown and delete the mask. We're going to create the bottom section of the wall first. So box select the area that is not the bottom and with your folders mask selected, fill that area in black. Any section that is black on the folders mask is now being hidden. And we can repeat these steps for the top half of the wall as well. But instead of masking out the top section, we can mask out the bottom section. This will be the top half of the wall. Now the bottom half of the wall is going to be VJ boarding, looking something like this. Pay attention to the shadows and highlights. Working in the bottom folder, let's create a new layer and name it shadows. To get a good grid for this, go to preferences, guides, grids, and slices, and change your grid line to 64 with a subdivision of four. Grab a hard round brush, change the pixel size to one and draw a black line down the grid. If you click a position and shift click another position, it'll draw a straight line between them. Then grab your blur tool and blur it out a little bit. You can add a new layer and do it a couple more times if you like. And once you're done, merge them all together by selecting all of your shadow layers and pressing control plus E. Make sure that layer is named shadow and create another layer and draw a white line down the other side. Blur it, adjust the opacity so that it isn't super harsh and rename it to highlight. Once you're happy, copy and paste these across your grid line. One every grid is good enough, then merge all your shadows together and all your highlights together separately. You can merge them all together as one layer, but I like to keep them separate because if you wanna change the color of the wood, the white might be a little bit conflicting and you might just wanna adjust the opacity on just the highlights. Now to add a skirting, just find an image of a skirting board that you really like copy and paste a front facing image of it into Photoshop, resize it to fit your image, then create a new folder for your skirting board inside of the bottom folder. Delete any shadows and highlights that extend into the areas of your skirting board by box selecting the skirting board area and deleting the shadows and highlights from the VJs. Now, all you wanna do is just repeat the same steps with the shadows and the highlights. Just copy the light and dark areas from your reference image, draw some lines, blur them, erase some sections if you need, and just adjust the opacity so that it tucks in nicely. Grab a section of your skirting board that you really like, invert selection with Control, Shift, and I, and just hit Delete. Invert it again, and then stretch the remaining section out to fit your canvas. Do this for both the highlights and the shadows. We can repeat these steps for the dado rail. This is just the little wooden beam that runs across the middle of the wall. I'll keep it simple, nothing fancy. When you're done, just add any little touch up shadows to the areas that you might need them under the dado rail. Maybe if you wanna strengthen up some shadows and highlights, just add a new layer to the respective folder and go from there. And now for my favorite part, we can use some textures to bring this image to life. Find a random image of a wood grain texture and cover your VJ board with it. Put it into a new folder, have the grain running from top to bottom like such, mask out the rail and skirting, and then copy and paste this layer, turning the wood grain sideways and applying the new mask to the VJ area. Control plus U on your wood grain layers to turn the saturation down to zero. This will turn it black and white, allowing us to multiply these layers over the top of our textures. Turn the opacity down so that it isn't so strong. And that's just a really simple way that you can achieve a wood grain texture. Just be careful with this step if you're planning to use this for anything commercial. Obviously, if you're just taking random images off the internet, then you may not have like any rights to use them and 
copyright laws might come and bite you in the ass. There are plenty of like texturing websites and such where you can get textures from or just use your phone and take some images from around the house or the neighborhood or whatever. All right, so let's create a new folder, name it grunge, add a new layer, enable pattern preview and select your brush tool. Go with black or any other color and just start brushing your color in. Then grab the erase tool, change the brush to something cool, I don't know, turn the opacity down to something like 20% and then just start clicking in random areas, slowly bringing back that color and create a bit of grunge. Turn the opacity down on this layer and this simply just adds a bit of dirtiness to everything. Repeat this step as many times as you like. You can find cool grunge brushes online to give you some nice options. If you have any grunge maps, you can also drag and drop those in, multiplying them over the top of your other layers. While the pattern preview is turned on, you can draw a line straight up to the edges, seamlessly applying it to the opposite side of your texture. This allows for tileable textures without any visible seams. Do this step until your heart's content. Repeat this process for the top half of the wall. Don't be afraid to get creative and try new things out. Not only is that how you're going to improve, but it's also how you just create original things as well. I purchased this alpha ornament pack for sculpting a while back, but was able to repurpose this and create this nice effect, something that you would typically see on old wallpapers. Simply bring in an image to a new canvas, remove any background that you don't want, then go to edit and define pattern to save it. Now back in your main project, add a new layer and shift plus F5 to fill that layer in. Select the custom pattern that you created, Select the brick fill if you want to give it a brick-like pattern. And once you've clicked OK, just adjust the pattern size to your liking. Color overlay your pattern to change it to whatever you want. And with these basic steps, you're able to create something like this. If done correctly, you should be able to tile this seamlessly throughout your scene. Now that we got the wall complete, let's take a look at taking some photos that we've taken on our phone and processing them into textures. The world is full of textures at our disposal. You're literally walking through a texture library waiting to just be processed and used in your video games. I took this photo of a tiled floor in some random restaurant. Creating a new 1024 by 1024 canvas in Photoshop, I'll bring this photo in. We're going to resize this image until you can only see tiles and try and find the most neutral section somewhere where there isn't a lot of heavy shadowing anywhere or lighting. We can perspective warp this by going into image and perspective warp. Then we can click anywhere on our canvas. This tile is very simple. I just need to place these dots over these tiles here. If I place them in the center of these diamonds, when we get to tile this texture, everything will connect up nice and easy. Then once you're done, press enter. Move the dots into the corners of your canvas, turn the grid on, to snap them to grid. Sometimes you might have to zoom in a little bit, then hit enter and trim the edges by going to edit, trim and top left pixel color. That will delete anything that's outside of your canvas. If we go to filter, other, offset and enter half the value of our canvas size, which is 512 by 512. This will offset the X and Y axis by that amount. We'll see an obvious seam that runs through the center and not everything lines up perfectly. So let's fix that. I'm going to grab the polygon lasso tool and cut out a piece of the tile from another section. I'll copy and paste it over the seam and resize it to fit as needed. Remember, you can make use of the control, shift or alt while resizing to use the different sizing options. Try and not use the exact same tile to cover every seam spot. This just avoids heavy repetition. Once you've gone through and covered all the seams, make sure to merge all your layers together. You may need to offset it once more to double check that you haven't missed anything. And once done, go to pattern preview and you will see that you have a seamless tileable texture. Sometimes I'll resize the image to a quarter of the canvas size and just add three more to the corners to make it a little bit smaller. If you picture this texture being placed on a meter square floor, these tiles would be pretty damn large. So making them smaller in Photoshop will combat that problem. Now you can add some grunge maps or paint and erase your own grunge in. You can adjust the levels, contrast, saturation, anything that you want to process your image in a way that suits you. This is what I'm left with after messing around with it. And all that's left to do now is export these textures and apply them to your meshes inside of Blender. UV unwrap your mesh to fit your textures and they're ready to be put straight into a game engine. Because these are image textures, there isn't really any need to bake them out. Following these steps, I managed to create this little scene. I made this cardboard box from an old photo that I took of a cardboard box. I found this print and piece of tape on the internet, drew in a little bit of shadowing, and then UV unwrapped a cube to the image texture inside of Blender. That's pretty much it. But that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope that you've learned something new and also hope that you can understand that making PSX textures is a pretty straightforward process. I did make a video in the past covering PSX textures, but that was focused on more like PS1 
textures with pixels and stuff like that. Whereas this is focused on more higher resolution 1K textures. I don't know if it's actually PSX. I just thought it looks kind of cool. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to help me out, like, comment, subscribe, gives me those algorithm points. I also have a Patreon page if you want to sign up and come support me. You will get access to all my project files that I use for these videos. I've also got a Discord if you'd like to come and join a passionate game dev and game art community. And yeah, we're having a good time over there. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.